Hi guys. So um, it's Monday, uh, and I went to the car boot sale yesterday, and there was nothing to buy. <laughs> After two really successful weeks, uh, there were three computers there. Um, they were, well, two of them were like so, LG A775. I think one was a dual core, one was a quad core, but I'm not interested. Uh, the guy tried to sell me them for ten euros each, but I really didn't want them. Uh, I had like another guy I had a similar age, Athlon 64, like a, a pack or bell or something, and I wasn't excited enough either. Um, only thing I did see that was a bit interesting was a couple of uh, Sega Mega Drives, uh, you know, all box stuff. I'm not sure actually if they were complete, but they were in the original boxes, uh, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog packs, uh, two different stores, one, one had one, another one had the same. Um, Maybe if that's interesting, I'll look up on eBay and uh, go back next week, see if they're there. Um, but anyway, um, these are the two motherboards uh, that we were looking at back in the last week. And uh, I know a lot of you enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, so just a reminder to anybody who didn't see the first half, but I will link it to you. Um, this one works and this one repeatedly switches on and off. Yeah. And um, if I force the power supply to start, it shuts down and stays shut down so something i would say in the power supply is tripping out and holding the the green wire low yeah and it stays like that unless you switch off the mains power to the power supply and after a few seconds that releases yeah and then you can start it again um so i know a lot of you guys suggested things like sh a short circuit on a derived rail and i completely agree with that that not on the 3.3 the 5 or the 12 i've measured the resistances they're all the same yeah but somewhere on the derived rails are short and one of the suggestions was to look for damage in the USB sockets yeah so I had a look at that this morning and this is what I can see and that's the the, the USBs look absolutely fine yeah I can't see any problems in here um, so I'm still working on the basis that something somewhere is drawing too much power like there's a short that I can't find um, so I'll show you what I did next uh, this morning I came to the idea that <clears throat> I could maybe tell what was happening by measuring the voltage here, yeah, on the 3.3, the 5 and the 12. And the idea was that when I switched on, maybe I'd see one voltage didn't come up or didn't come up properly, yeah. And the idea I had was that maybe that's the rail on which the derived rail is sitting, yeah. So uh, I'll show you what happened when I did that. Um, I'll just get the uh, multimeter there. So we're, we're ready uh, to go. We just want to start button. Uh, yeah, power supply is on. So what I did is I checked uh, from ground into the 3.3 first, yeah. And we just I just started it and just want to see what actually happens. And you can see the 3.3 comes up for a second or so uh, and goes off. So I thought, well, okay, what's, what's the 12 doing? And I'm pretty sure I know the 12 was coming up. I tested, I tested it here earlier, yeah? And we see again the 12 comes up for a second or so. I then went on to the 5 volt. Um, it's doing the same thing, yeah? So nothing really is indicating that one of the voltage rails has any problem coming up so that didn't really help me um, so having given up on that idea I then thought well look if there's a short on here and I've tested previously all the these uh, either MOSFETs or uh, LDO linear regulators yeah I tested this one there's two more down here uh, I tested on these coils um, so I thought, well, if it's a short somewhere, if it's on a voltage rail, then the chances are there's a capacitor on the voltage rail. So I went and tested all these electrolytics for shorts and compared them with the, the known good board. And again, I couldn't find any difference. Uh, uh, these were on vehicle, these, there's another one up here, a little one. But I tried all that, measured the resistance from each of these, couldn't see any difference. So I then thought, well, I still need to determine this. Maybe I can figure out which which regulator is feeding into this short. Yeah. Uh, so I started to measure on the coils 
this is V-Core. V-Core does come on. I can show you. Um, if I go onto one of the uh, onto one of the MOSFETs here, yeah. and we can switch it on. So the voltmeter again, where you can see it, and you can see V-Core is actually coming on and going off. Yeah, I'm looking good. Um, down here, this is VRAM. And again, I can measure on here. I'll just get a connection onto the MOSFET. That should do it. No, I must be on the wrong pin of the MOSFET. But it is there. Yeah, VRAM is there. I'm obviously on the wrong pin now. I'll tell you what, let's just measure on the coils, yeah, just so you can see <coughs> that it is here. So I'll just flick it over, yeah. So there's a. Uh, coil down here grounds come off this right okay maybe ground come off before yeah this is five volts on this one yeah um the ram is over here there yeah, 1.5 that's that's v ram yeah um, there's another coil up here which is going to 1.7 the same as the V core is going to 1.7 and I then started working around so I know there's no shorts I can see yeah so I then came and checked these two down here now these ones um set the probe on yeah this is five volts and this is there all the time yeah this I think is three point that's right here this is three point three yeah, this is 3.3 .3 standby. It's there all the time, yeah? Uh, this one is also 3.3, .3, yeah? And that stays there. Come on the output of this one. This is 5, so that's, that's the output, yeah? But while I was measuring these around here, I noticed that something here is, is warm, yeah? I took the top off the uh, PCH, and this is now where I found the problem, actually, is. And somebody suggested this. Every time it pulses on, just for a moment, this goes hot. Yeah, this goes hot. Whereas when I try the other one, after some seconds, because this runs, it warms up. But it doesn't instantly like this. Is as soon as it comes on, I feel a pulse of heat. Yeah, here. Okay, one moment. Also, if you look. Uh, the heat sink which comes off this one is obviously kind of like blackened in the middle and you can see on the actual uh, PCH the same sort of like thing is like stuck to it so this obviously this obviously been getting very hot yeah um, compared with the other one which is like this this is off the good working one and uh, this this is uh, nice and clean yeah just getting to focus for you I wind it down yeah so that's what we have um so i thought okay well let's check on the the capacitors here for shorts yeah and the point is i don't see a short but i do see a where of resistance so if i just get properly into focus my camera keeps drifting for some reason known to itself yeah on this capacitor here uh, and i need to get the yeah let me just arrange it one moment So, there's two voltage rails on here. There's there's one on these capacitors, yeah. That's a sort of ohms range. Okay. And this one reading about 150 ohms or there, about I just slip there. Yeah. And these are all on the same uh, voltage rail. This is like a 1.5 volts rail and the 1.5 volts rail does come up yeah this one in the corner is on the 3.3 and this is reading about 8 ohms yeah on this one I'll just uh, disconnect the ATX I think that's actually possibly affecting the reading turn it off there okay let's go again yeah about 12 ohms that's what I had before that's why I knew it was effect this that's about 12 ohms yeah now if you look on the good one i 
okay these actually this voltage rail actually reads lower on this one yeah. this is the good one it actually reads lower than the other one this one is, reads very similar yeah so there's really not any difference apart from say this has a lower resistance on this rail <coughs> sorry I was disrupted again the other one um, although the resistances measure the same every time the power supply pulses on this gets hot in that instance yeah um, the voltage on here by the way the 3.3 .3 isn't the same as the 3.3 .3 here um, just switch this on and we'll start it oops I'll just switch it on and plug it back in during my time of getting disrupted it's all off uh. yeah. That's because I wanted to measure the resistance, that's why. Half an hour's passed, that's in between. Okay, right, here we are. So, this one, start it going, with its pulsing on and off, yeah. You'll see that the 1.5 on here, or thereabouts, just get onto the capacitor, it's coming on and off, yeah. This 3.3, not sure from the right polarity, uh, wrong way. This 3.3 .3 meter probe went to my finger, by the way. That was a little ah, it's pulsing on and off. So, this is not the same 3.3 .3 as coming from here yet. I say every time that pulses on, this gets hot. Just in that instance, it gets hot. Very noticeable, yeah. So, there we have a problem. Um, I've also tried, as you might be just interested, to see if I can see a difference in the resistance if I use diode mode, yeah? So let's plug this again. So let's go to diode mode. I've tried this also. Sorry, missed the bleep. There we go. I'm in diode mode now, yeah? So if I measure across here, let's see what we've got. It's all, um, it reads uh, about 12, yeah? I'm not in diode mode. I am now. The VC, VDC symbols up there. Okay. This is reading practically like a short now, and I think the other one does basically the same. Is that the other one? Uh, yeah. So you can't see any difference in diode mode or in resistance mode, but from the evidence of this. The burnt thing here, the fact this gets hot every time that power pulses on tells me this is where the short effectively is. It just doesn't look like a short to the meter. So there you go guys, that's the cause of the problem. Um, quite an interesting one there. Um, yeah, at least one of you did get it right saying this is dead short, but it's not dead short. That's why we don't see the short, but it's still the PCH that's faulty. Um, I don't think it's worth getting one uh, for the bills worth 45 euros. I could have a quick look, see if it's even possible. Um, but I think I'll keep it. It's worth keeping hold of this. I mean, it's got a lot of useful parts on it, yeah. Uh, for anything else that uh, might go wrong, you know, a lot of useful bits on this one. Or I might find another one with mashed up sockets in the CPU or some other drastic issue that possibly I could take the PCH off that one and put it on this one so I'm pretty confident that's all that is wrong with it uh, okay guys hope you enjoyed that it's a short video but it's answered the answered the <laughs> the conundrum yeah of what was wrong with it um, so uh, yeah let's get straight on something else maybe we'll get uh, two videos uploaded quite quick succession here okay guys see you soon now ciao for now